and welcome to the Mindful Making YouTube channel. This is video number 26 and the Mindful Making uh, channel is all about yarn and knitting and knitting is where is my mindfulness practice. That is how I, I relax and recharge. I hope you have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or some cold to drink if it's it's warm where you are as it is here today in Hornsby Heights north of Sydney. Um, grab your project and then uh, let's spend the next half hour together. I'm Jane and I'm Danish and you have landed as I said here north of Sydney. Today it is the 28th of February which actually marks the end of the summer season here. It's very sad because this summer has been very different from the summer, the past year summer and especially the last year. Luckily, we haven't had any bushfires around here in Western Australia. They have had where a year ago we had that awful bushfire season. This year we have had a lot of rain. It's been gray. It's been pretty cold. Um, and not summer as it, it normally is. But today it is a pretty day and if my eyes are just squinting a bit it's just because I'm looking out towards um, the sun and the view and let me just turn around the camera so you can see what I'm looking at. So it's very nice out there uh, and I'm sitting here on my balcony. Today I have two finished objects to share and a work in progress and then a bit of well, general life update towards the end. You can find me as Mindful Making on Instagram and on Facebook. On Ravelry I'm Mindful Making AU and um, I also have an Etsy shop with that name. Uh, I have a few patterns published on Ravelry and also on the um, in that Etsy shop if you want to have a look. And if you're a new viewer, welcome to, to this channel. I'm so pleased you have found my little spot on the internet. We have a plane coming over at the moment. There's not too many of those, um, but once in a while they come over. So welcome to this channel if you are uh, coming back. Well, welcome back. Uh, and I'm so happy that uh, that you found your way here again. I'm thrilled to have you here. So as I said, it's yarn and it's knitting and it's about the joy of making. The first finished object that I want to talk about today is what I'm wearing. And this is the baby blue summer top and it's designed by Susie Halman, a Danish designer. And in the last uh, video episode, um, I was working on it and I presented some of the details, both in terms of the pattern and the yarn. But now it is finished and I will insert a, um, a short little video so you can see me wearing it. It's a beautiful, lightweight uh, summer top. I really like the neckline and how the shape is up here. Also the bit of um, just short sleeves just over the shoulders. Um, and in the video, you can see the length, it's sort of uh, waist length. And the fabric uh, from the yarn is very uh, airy and soft and it's just gentle wearing um, to, directly towards the skin. So. Um, the yarn is the uh, Sandness yarn. Tutline, can you see that? Yeah. So it is a um, it is a blend of fifty three percent cotton, thirty three percent viscose, and fourteen percent linen. It drapes beautifully, and I think the well the cotton and linen, of course, makes it very airy and um, cool to the skin. You sh it looks like it has more linen in it, but 14% um, and it holds up very well with the, with the washing 
So it's a, a garment that lasts a long time. It is a Norwegian uh, yarn brand. I don't think you can get it here in Australia, but there are a lot of, you can buy it directly from, from their websites and there would be a lot of shops in Europe that stash their brand. It, it, I have worked this uh, summer top on a 3.0 millimeter needle. There's a lot of stock in it, so it's a very relaxing knit. You can uh, watch TV, read a book, uh, listen to your favorite audio book, or just sit and watch the, uh, the view or the nature around you. So it's a very calming, satisfying knit. knit. One, uh, one detail here on this, on this um, summer top, well, the neckline, and then this shoulder detail up here that I really, really like. I think it's beautiful and was very easy to make. For sure something that I will do again. And I can highly recommend this pattern. It is uh, available on Ravelry and it's available in Danish only. Let's just uh, look at the stats. Look, I, uh, I'm in this, uh, this rosy gold color theme. So I found a pen that matches the colors. So uh, this, make, this gives me a lot of joy just to have it um, like this. So baby blue, baby blue. Yeah, so I started the 14th of January and it was finished on the 31st of January. So uh, I counted this, uh, the amount of yarn that I've used in finished objects towards the January uh, stats. It is, um, the color is, the colorway, this blue colorway is number 6364, if you're interested in that color. And I used uh, three and a half balls of yarn for this, and it's a total of 770 meters. So it runs 220 meters in a um, 30 gram ball. And uh, my gauge is 29 stitches and 40 rows. So a lot of knitting in this. Um, and it's a slightly tighter gauge than what the page call, uh, pattern calls for. Um, I have done size small, medium. There are only two sizes in the pattern. So if we look at the stats for January of finished object, I will actually do that later when I presented the other finished object that I have for you today. The other finished object is a pair of socks. And uh, you might say, oh, isn't that the same as you presented last week? Well, similar, but different. So these were from last, uh, the last, or last week, last month, last episode. And here are the new ones. So same, same, but slightly different. And as you can see, I have invested in sock blockers. Finally, I have some very nice way to present um, finished socks. Feel all professional and uh, adult when I have these. Um, as you can see, maybe on this one, so I, um, I received them in the mail. They are from Lithuania, I think, possibly. And they are a bit sticky on the treatment of the wood and a bit of paper stuck to this stickiness. But anyway, maybe a bit of a, a um, soft sanding and it will be gone. But now I have sock blockers, which is uh, also something that I haven't had for a long time. These are the Rose City Rollers socks, shorty socks. And uh, the yarn is from uh, Melbourne City Dye Works and the colorway is socks on the beach. Still, these makes me very happy to look at and, uh, and to wear. So I did these two at a time. They are um, cuff to toe, and it has that reinforced heel, um, heel flap and gusset, and they fit perfectly. Uh, one of my favorite uh, patterns for socks. Uh, these uh, sock blockers are 39, 37, 39, medium size. And I also bought a pair from for, um, for the men in, the, in my family, so I can knit socks for them. They do stick to each other a bit. 
anyway i'm very pleased with that so that was the second finished object these ones i started first of feb and they were done the day after second of february size medium 2.25 matted glue 64 stitches and I used 52 grams of yarn, and that is 200 meters. I still have a tiny bit left of that stripy yarn, so maybe I can get um, one more pair out of out of that ball of yarn that I bought. Well, I don't have it in here. But And what I was thinking is that I would combine it with either of these two colors as um, in the toe and the heel. And I would do them two at a time so I knew, I would know uh, how much yarn I have left. Or maybe the stripy one, this, the, um, the self-striping yarn would be on the, on the heel and toe and then a um, solid color in between. Let's see if that ever gets done. But uh, I, I think I have to one more if I add some leftovers and stashed yarn for that. So let's talk stats. In January, I finished five, five objects and I knitted 3,453 meters of yarn. In February, it's uh, way less of finished objects at least. So I've only finished two and I've only used 420 meters of yarn. I have been knitting a lot. So, uh, so it's just to say that I only count the um, the, the meter of yarn, meterage of yarn used um, to when, to when the, uh, the project is finished to that month where it actually finishes. And I have one on the go. That is the one that I will show you now. I am working on this beauty. So this is Knit Love Wool. So Jennifer Steingast, she has a knit along, um, I think running through April or through to April. And I had the garden gate pattern sitting in my queue on Ravelry. So I thought this was the opportunity to knit this one. It is an absolute delight to knit this pattern. And as you can see, I am after the separation to, to sleeves and I'm on the, uh, the easy stretch of stocking it round and round. The yarn that I'm using here are um, these two colors. So it is the coast, no, not the coast, super soft yarn. And it's from Holst Garn. It is a tiny bit scratchy and you wouldn't think that it would get as soft as it actually does. Because when it's wash, washed, when it's washed, it will soften and it will bloom possibly not wearing directly on the skin, but I have used this type of yarn on a lot of garments that I wear down here in the, uh, in the warm Australia. And I think I've said this before that when we left Denmark and moved um, to move down here, well, uh, my knitting friend said, oh, well, what about all your yarn and wool, Jane? What will you, you won't get any use of that in down there in the heat. Well, actually, I have used them even more than I did in Denmark because I wear jumpers like this as a, um, you know, a jacket or an outer, as outerwear um, on a um, chilly night or 
in the aircon at, off at the office, um, wearing in the morning when going to work, and then um, just having it in the bag when going home when it's uh, when the temperatures are up. I really, really enjoy this project, and um, as I did <laughs> for for I think for um, I did for this uh, the baby blue summer top as well. I put in progress markers to say where I was each day I have worked on this one and as you can see here I get a bit more done when I just get into the stockinette uh, part of the knitting it has sit been sitting idle just for the last well I think during last week where I haven't worked as much on this one. Uh, just coming back to the yarn, I uh, I bought them as cones in uh, at Holst, and the color, the main color, is called sage blue, and it's a beautiful greenish gray blue blue undertones. It's very pretty, and then uh, this. Uh, is called iced so a very pale light blue and then tiny tonal I'm about to say speckles but it's um, just tonal of a, a darker blue brighter blue in this is. and um, that is the one that I have used for the contrast color this is my second attempt for knitting the garden gate. And I will just put up a short video with the first attempt. So as you can see, the um, it went well. I was um, at uh, separating four sleeves and body, tried it on and it was too big. The problem is up here uh, around um, the neck and the chest and I don't know whether it's my broad shoulders <laughs> that it just gives that I need a bit of, uh, I need some fabric just to, to go get around my shoulders and then it, um, there's too much up here. Or whether it is my gauge that I probably, next time I do one of, of these color works, round yokes, that I should go down needle size um, for, for this section up here. But uh, I unraveled, unpicked everything and started over. So the first uh, attempt was I, I wanted to make the size that is a 42 inch bust, finished measurements, which turned out to be too big for me. This is the, I, I went down a size. <clears throat> so this is the 40 inch finished measurements. And I would think that using this yarn gives a slightly bigger gauge and uh, how a secret, I didn't swatch. But now it fits nicely, I'm happy. I'm doing a few uh, waist decreases here, just a, a three or four, three, I think, um, just to give it a bit of, of, of shape waist shaving up otherwise really enjoy really really enjoy when knitting color work and um, catching the floats I have usually you know um, I knit the continental way of knitting so I carry both strands of yarn on my left index finger but I found a way to weave under and over so I could secure the few floats and I will just show you how I did that. 
what you have to be careful when doing that, well, I found that you need to give the yarn, especially the contrast color, a, um, a light tuck so that you ensure that there isn't too much, yeah, much yarn in that, in that float. Typically the floats get too tight, but I found that it actually gave, gave too much yarn. So I just had to do a, a, a little tug. And you can see here examples of the resulting floats. And um, with that weaving in and out gave me a good rhythm and um, for sure increased the speed of, of knitting color work. I will show you though that what happens when, um, when the float or there's too much yarn is that the, the yarn travels back. So you can see some of these stitches are slightly larger than the other ones, especially those last ones. Yeah, so the yarn travels back and opens up the stitch. Hopefully this will be um, will even itself out with wear and wash. But otherwise, if you use um, that method of weaving up and down um, with the yarns that I showed in that little video, just be aware to, to give the yarn a slight tug so it stays in line with the, with the fabric. Yeah, but thoroughly enjoying working with this yarn and um, it smells delightfully of sheep. Should have just a hint. It's good. It is good. So that is the, um, that is what I'm working on. And I have been working on another um, piece of knitting that I'm actually finishing today. It's a new design um, you will hear much more about it later. Um, so that is included in the uh, stats, another plane of February. My son just came out with a cup of coffee. He makes the best coffee. And while I am knitting, especially when uh, working on the stockinet uh, body, I am reading. I'm in a book club um, and we meet e each month and we have agreed books of the entire year. We have a very elaborate system of um, suggesting books and uh, voting. So it's all a um, very democratic uh, list we, we get every year. We meet 11 months and um, we will meet on Tuesday where we have been reading this, reading this book, The Blobs by Kyle Perry. I think it's her debut book and it's set in Tasmania and uh, school, high school girls going missing. So it's a bit of a thriller um, action book. It's good. It is good. I sat up late yesterday to knit and read. And and how can I read and knit at the same time? It's because the fingers just do their work and that's why plain stocking knit works well. And you could say, is that very mindful to do that? And I would say, yes, for me it is um, because the um, the knitting of stocking knit is just a uh, an automatic muscle memory that is just uh, working in my hands and I could still have that sensation of, of yarn through my fingers and feeling that I make something, I create something while reading. Usually I try to find audiobooks because I know that I want to knit. <laughs> that is my main priority. But with the um, a, a project that works with Reading, I enjoy reading and knitting at the same time. I only have a few uh, pages left, so I know exactly what I want, will be doing when this uh, video, when I've recorded this video, is to finish. It's very good. I can highly recommend. We 
we are approaching the end of this uh, video. Uh, it was a very short one and uh, just in terms of a short life update if you are interested. February was a bit of a blur to me. Um, I had two weeks where I was very depleted of energy where I had to take a nap during the day and just that feeling of complete, you know, just like and it flu symptoms and uh, heavy muscle and a bit of yeah muscle pain, headache and extreme fatigue, tiredness. And that of course also affects uh, knitting mojo and moods and so I had two weeks that wasn't the best but um, the last week week and a half has been much better so I don't know whether it's um, menopause stress life exhaustion uh, poor sleep not enough water dehydration could be a factor but anyway I'm feeling much better and just talking about um, well getting well talking about age and 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 you know women and i think you know menopause we um, we do go through that i don't know whether how far i am along that path so i have gained a bit of weight uh, last year in COVID, both because of COVID and not moving you know that normal walk to the station and you know to the uh, the coffee machine at work for lunch walk around the park for lunch and uh, I think uh, you know working from home a year I had to decide on the exercise I had to get out and I, I really enjoyed my morning walks but it's something that didn't you know you didn't get the steps in just from your, your normal routines it was just something that you had in to make a, an active decision to go out and do. And probably we have had a bit more to eat and a bit more wine over the last year. So um, there is a um, six, eight kilos that I need to, or I want to get rid of again. Whether that will happen, I do feel that it's much harder. It's much harder than it was in, my, in, in, in the younger years. And now I'm sort of thinking, shoot, I want, I want to lose a bit of weight. That's fine. So I am also looking at whether I should change a bit in, the, uh, in my, my wardrobe to update it to fit um, how the body is now and, and more dresses and looser fitted because there is a, a lot of my clothes I can't wear. <laughs> which is a bit embarrassing but do you feel that too sometimes that your body changes either with uh, yeah of course um yeah throughout life and how do you deal with that do you just accept or do you fight it or, or i'm i'm curious to hear about that as well if you're interested to share it would be lovely my daughter is starting university tomorrow that will be her first day um she is currently this weekend in Canberra visiting one of her high school friends that moved down there. Um, my youngest son, his football um, training and matches has started four times a week. So my, every weekend I am at the sideline and luckily I have my knitting so I bring that along um, and uh, enjoy hours of knitting. <laughs> and it's become a bit of a um, a laugh for the other parents to say, "Oh, what are you working on now?" And you you finish you will finish the jumper during the game. And yeah, so and as I sit, say when I sit, I knit, and um, that is what I do. My older son um, went with a group of friends to the Blue Mountains, had a lovely time. And uh, well, we don't see him that much. He is 21. So he is preparing, I think, to move out. And I think I talked about that last time as well in the video. Otherwise, it's very, very quiet. Another thing, though, that I have 
started is to set the timer for 10 minutes each day and just pick somewhere in the house and then I spend those 10 minutes just decluttering a tiny space in the house. So I've st started in the laundry where we had um, boxes of, you know, shoe polish, um, and then we had some um, some cloths to 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 use for that, and uh, some uh, light bulbs, and some just stuff um, sitting there. So I've um, the last over the last four or five days, I've gone through those those boxes, reduced it from five to four. And now I know what the boxes contain and I've thrown out things that we for sure will never use or are too old. And I think if I do it again, I can throw out more, but, uh, but it's a good feeling and just uh, 10 minutes each day. Uh, I'll keep you posted on how that's going because I just felt the urge to get a bit more sorted and, uh, and focused. And the same with uh, plans for for knitting and each day what um, what I aim to do and I just having one one task each day in terms of um, my mindful making business and adventure I um, I complete one thing a day it could be a small or a larger I, um, item or task. And that makes me feel that I'm progressing. Um, so that is much better. That sense of just yeah, taking along sm uh, small steps. Yes, it is small steps, but just taking those steps one at a time makes me feel that I am moving instead of those two weeks where it's just uh, basically sitting there and uh, couldn't do anything. Um, so I don't wish that for anybody. I am good and I hope you are good as well where you are. The vaccinations for COVID has started. I think we um, will probably get vaccinated during May. If everything goes well, they just started this week in Australia with uh, frontline and uh, quarantine workers, disability, aged care workers as well and um, elderly. Um, so it's all going well and we have no cases so we are fairly open apart from inviting overseas visitors we're still um, um, looking forward to when we can invite guests again in from overseas we would love to see family coming out to visit hopefully towards the end of, of this year it might be possible if we have that um, vaccine passport that they talk about in Europe that uh, if you have had the vaccine they, or approve of that and uh, that would help you um, move around to other countries so you can show that you are vaccinated. My mother she turns I think 89 tomorrow the 1st of March she has had her first jab everything went well and is expecting the second one here, the 12th of March. So it's good to know that um, that she's been taken care of and uh, that can also help her move around a bit more. We have started singing again, yeah. I am in a choir and the, um, the whole of last year we did Zoom singing and it's it's not the same. It's not the same because on, when you're on Zoom, you only hear the conductor and your own voice. When you sit in the living room downstairs, the family can hear you sing. <laughs> and sometimes it isn't very, it isn't very pretty. But now we are allowed to sing and we sing outside. So the last few Mondays we've been in a car park because it's been, uh, it's been wet and it's been raining. So we are dry and we can sing together socially distanced with the one and a half meter between each of us but we can sing together it's lovely to be back and just hearing the the other voices and um, 
the harmonies and it's just a delight. It makes me very happy to sing and um, something that I've really missed. Now it's just to get, getting back into the practice of practicing. So we get these audio tracks that we listen to and, um, and learn our voices. I'm a soprano one, I have a high voice. Um, it's good. It is good. Well, uh, this will be it for today. If you like the video, please give, give it a thumbs up. It helps the channel. Subscribe, put on the little bell for notification and please share with a friend. Um, it, uh, it will mean a lot to me. So thank you and see you next time. Happy knitting. Bye bye.